Hi guys, it's CVPP. It's Tuesday, it's week 8. It's the spring of 2021. Here we go. Uh, where have we been? We're talking about ECG or EKG, whichever you prefer. Uh, remember, we were talked about how to set this up. And let me get my pointer out here. Yeah, so we have limb leads is created by this little box right here. You can put them all the way down at the wrists. You don't have to, though. Chest leads, we haven't talked about those too much. They will go mainly in the fourth and fifth intercostal spaces here. Limb leads are looking into a coronal plane. Chest leads are looking into an axial plane. Right? I don't I can't get any more stars on this. You're gonna miss a lot of questions if you don't understand this. Um, this is the AOO wheel, the angle of orientation wheel. And um, this is how we quantify the average, the average flow of current um, through the heart, which is important because that tells us about different pathologies. So um, this is the, you could call it, some call it the hexaxial reference system. Others call it the angle, I call it the angle of orientation wheel, the AOO wheel. Um, but it's this is mainly designed for the limb leads, and um, we can quantify or we can we can describe in writing the average current flow through the heart by referencing it to zero degrees, sixty degrees is the current flowing to ninety degrees is the current, and we can uh, fl flow into negative ninety. I hope not, but it might be. Um, so. Normal is between 0 and 90 degrees, so the direction of current through the ventricles should be heading down here toward the south e or toward the southeast, toward the left pocket, so to speak. That's normal. If the current is flowing way up here toward the shoulder, that's not normal. Okay, that and we'll look at what that means in a little bit. Okay, and we'll we'll build on this. So you're not supposed to get this quite yet, but again, the angle of orientation. Um, that is the camera's eye. Uh, the camera, for example, let's draw limb lead 2 is right here. right? So if we drew a camera down here, there's limb lead 2. There's its camera. So its angle of orientation is a straight line coming out. That's not a very straight line. But it's a straight line coming out of that camera. That's its, orient that's its angle of orientation. Uh, specifically, it's 60 degrees from a horizontal line. Okay, see how that works? And that's important that you understand that straight line because we're going to draw a perpendicular on that in a little while to figure out the exact angle of or, or to exa the exact flow of current through the heart. All right. And the camera's eye is always positive. There's a negative view. I don't think that's terribly important, but. For those of you who have to know everything, uh, the angle of orientation is seen through the positive lead. All right, let's meet the six limb leads. So we have three standard limb leads and three augmented limb leads. The three standard ones are the ones you probably set up back in first quarter. Uh, this is Eitoven's triangle. And uh, the right leg is grounded. And let's meet them now. So this is an important slide because the most important thing of this slide is you have to memorize the angle of orientation. Well, that's the camera's view. So limb lead 1 is positioned at 0 degrees uh, in a coronal plane. Limb lead 2, this is often the star of the show. This is placed at 60 degrees uh, from the AOO wheel. In other words, it's 60 degrees from a horizontal. So let's go look at it here. Uh, so limb lead 1 is right here. Right? So limb lead 2 is placed here. That's its angle of orientation. And how do we describe where it's placed in accord with this AOO wheel? So it's 60 degrees away from horizontal, which is given 0. Right? Where's limb lead 3? Limb lead 3 is over here. It's, it's looking in this direction. That's its angle of orientation. Kind of heading up toward the, the northeast, if you will. Okay, so these are the different directions that the, or the views that these cameras have. 
Okay, never understand that. All right. Right, and here's just another diagram. We can see we got the camera one place. That's limb lead one. It's looking this direction. Uh, limb lead two is looking this direction. The arrows are kind of going the opposite way, but limb lead three is over here at 120 degrees. From where? Where's the reference? Uh, the reference is right here, zero, which is limb lead one. Happens to look down this way. There's limb lead one. Got it? Limb lead 2 is the star of the show. Um, yes, it is. Why is it the star of the show? Because limb lead 2 here, it actually is looking right down, in most hearts, but not all hearts, it's looking right down the left ventricular septum. And, um, yep, so that's a good one. It's often used on the rhythm strip. Like here is a, an, a 12 lead EKG. This is called a tracing. And we can see that all the 12 leads are right here. There's limb lead 1, 2, 3. Uh, there's lay, uh, limb lead AVR, AVL, and AVF. And here's all the chest leads over here. But there's always one that is running down here all the way across. It keeps going and going and going. Notice that these are snippets. We just see a little piece of limb lead 1 here and a piece of AVR here. But this one runs and runs and runs, so we can look for... Uh, arrhythmias, um, premature ventricular contractions, premature atrial contractions, and s as such. We can measure the heart rate down here. Uh, so that's the, um, that's kind of the star of the show, oftentimes limbly too. All right, let's look at these. We mentioned the, aug let's, the AVL and AVR. Let's, let's get more into those. So these are called augmented limb leads. They're developed way back in 1942 by Goldberg. Uh, these are computer generated. And the computer tweaks the, limb, the leads that are already there. Uh, so these are made from those, those, that, those four original leads, the, the original Eithoven's leads. Um, are tweaked by the computer to make a different view of the heart, different angles of orientation. So you don't physically put any more leads down on the patient. Most importantly, need to know the angle of orientation or the view of these positive leads. So AVL, left, that means left, augmented voltage left arm, its angle of orientation is minus 30 degrees. Um, so this one is actually a little above above normal. We'll look at these more in a minute. AVR's angle of orientation is minus 50 degrees. This is the only one that looks at the right side of the heart, the right side of the ventricles and the right ventricle. The other ones all look at the left ventricle for the most part. And then AVF, that's floor, that's a bottom-up view, um, and that is angle of orientation is 90 degrees. Let's look at them. Right, so here's the angle of orientations. There's AVF is looking right up like this. Okay, AVR is coming across here and looking down like this. And then AVL is looking like this. All right, and that leads us back to the same diagram. You have to memorize this. I'm telling you right now, you're going to be completely lost if you don't memorize this. All right. Now the chest leads. We're not going to talk much in this class about chest leads, but we will mention them. They're designated V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. Um, they have angle of orientation, too. They are looking, but they look into an axial plane, right? The, the limb leads are looking in to a coronal plane. These are looking in to an axial plane, right? And here's tried to make, it's hard to see this without three-dimensional uh, ab abilities, but it's looking into this plane. Uh, so these are looking, they're looking down like this. 
right? Sort of in this view, sort of an A to P. Their their line of view is anterior to posterior, and then you can get a little oblique anterior to posterior, and then lateral to medial is another one. As long as they're looking into this plane, right? There's somebody tried to draw this. Uh, three-dimensional, but you can see them. We'll look at them more specifically where they're put in a second. There's more. Com there's more complex. There's like a 24 lead EKG, and you can have V7, 8, and 9. We're definitely not going into that. 12 lead EKG is. You can see plenty from a 12 lead EKG. Uh, what are they good for? Well, there's. These are particularly good at looking for myocardial infarctions. Uh, looking at bundle branch blocks, and they give us a good view of the P wave. Uh, V1 uh, gives us, and V2 sometimes, it gives us a nice view of the P wave when we look for pathology of the P wave. Right, the six precordial chest leads are uh, placed as follows. V1 is in the fourth intercostal space. Let's actually, you can read this, but let's look at the picture. Okay, so here's the fourth intercostal space. V1 is placed fourth intercostal space, right parasternal border. V2 is the left parasternal border in the intercostal space, fourth intercostal space. Skip V3 for now. V4, we know this location really well. V4 is placed in the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. That's what's there. What else do we know is there? That's where the apical impulse is. Um, that is also uh, the mitral valve auscultation area. V3 is placed right in between V2 and V4. So it's basically on the rib here between V2 and V4. Uh, V5 we can skip for right now. V6 is placed in the mid axillary line in the sixth intercostal space. And then you place V5 between V4 and V6, and that end up, ends up being in the anterior axillary line. Okay, that's, I mean, you should have an idea of where that goes. I'm not going to say true or false. V3 is in the third intercostal space. That's, I'm interested more in pathology, but that's for those of you who have to know everything. There you go. And what kind of views do we see? So we're, we see them looking into a horizontal plane here. Uh, so we see V1 is... In addition to AVR, now we have another lead that looks at the right side of the heart. So that could be a question. Uh, which two leads, blank and blank, view the right side of the ventricle, or view the right ventricle, or view the electrical activity of the right ventricle? Uh, it's V1 and AVR. Right, so V1 sees the right ventricle. V2 and V3 see the interventricular septum. V4 sees the apex of the left ventricle. V5 and 6 see the lateral wall of the left ventricle. Alright, so groupings putting it all together. Uh, so the anterior group that sees the anterior part of the heart is V2, V3, and V4. V5 and 6 see the left lateral side of the heart, which is important. and V1 sees the right ventricle. All right, now we're getting into the waves. Um, so this stuff you know, you should remember this from Dr. Doe days. So you should know the parts of an ECG. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because you already should know this. If not, you better go back and look at Dr. Doe's notes. But we will just go over it briefly here. So this is a typical... Uh, electric tracing of one heartbeat. And we can see both the atrial tracing part and the ventricular tracing part. Um, so the isoelectric line is a reference line that is flat. So it's right here, it's here, it's right here, it's here, and it's here. Okay, that's the isoelectric line. So P is the wave of uh, the P wave is eight represents atrial depolarization. The PR segment is very important. Uh, this, in fact, together the P wave and the PR segment is called the PR interval. This is very important. We'll we will 
look at this on the EKG tracing and you'll be able to tell me is that a normal or abnormal PR interval or PR segment or is the P wave maybe it's inverted P wave we'll talk a lot about this P wave and the PR segment together they're called the PR interval uh, the Q wave starts here so this is ventricular depolarization starts Q wave is often not seen um, that's why it's called the PR interval right why isn't the PR why isn't it the PQ interval well Guyton calls it the PQ interval uh, but it's called the PR interval because usually you don't see a Q wave so the Q wave is the start of ventricular depolarization uh, we have an up limb or we have a down limb and an up limb uh, once you go above the isoelectric line that is the up limb of the R wave once you go below the R wave or once you go kind of down here that's the down limb of the R wave but once you go below the isoelectric line now we're in the S region so that's the down limb of the S wave the up limb of the S wave we're going to talk about slurring of that S wave right some conditions call, cause the see how it's a straight line see how all of these are straight lines some conditions cause slurring or bowing of these waves they always should be straight waves and we'll talk about that uh, sometimes you can get a bowing or kind of an outpouching of the Q wave right that's called a delta wave that's seen in Wolf Parkinson White syndrome so normally these are built with uh, straight lines okay then we have the the ST segment um, that should be straight or it's okay if it's actually raised up a little bit sometimes it raises up a little bit that's not ST segment elevation we'll talk about that when the R wave doesn't come all the way oops when the R wave doesn't go all the way down to the isoelectric line and stays up here that's ST segment elevation that could be indication of pericarditis which we've showed you that briefly or um, a STEMI myocardial infarction T wave rec represents ventricular repolarization some people have a, a U wave we're not going to worry about that okay so the key intervals here the PR interval is important the QRS interval is important um, and that's going to be the most important stuff to us so here's the tracing again so each camera has a different view of the electrical flow of the electrical flow through the heart so you get different views notice that limb lead one which is at has an angle or orientation of zero degrees it shows the QRS complex upright but look at AVR right that's on the other side the wave would be traveling away from it so we get a just the opposite view we get a downward deflection of the QRS uh, complex All right also notice because of the anterior orientation V4 V5 and V6 are, they have a similar view to limb lead 1 2 and 3 see the QRS segment is upright in all of these and 4 5 and 6 QR segment or the um, QRS segment here is also upright as well or that not QRS segment my mind's blanking I don't know why it's blanking on something so easy yeah but anyway um, th they're upright these are upright these are upright and then we said remember we said V1 sees the right side of the heart so look at how that's downward downward deflection oh curious interval I was thinking segment curious interval um, is downward all right making use of the mean electrical access so remember the mean the mean electrical access was the average current flow through the ventricles so there's a ventricular mean electrical axis and there's an atrial mean electrical axis alright um, so which 
mean electrical axis, which way does it normally travel? Uh, we said this already. So the normal, in a normal person, the flow through the ventricles travels toward the southeast, right at limb lead 2. Anything between 0 and 90 degrees is considered normal. Um, and just for, just FYI, we're not going to worry too much about the atrial mean electrical axis, but that travels about like this. It's similar. So the average current flow, flow through both atria travels, I guess you could say, east, east, southeast, a little bit more toward the east. Okay, so that's normal. But even if, if Joey has a mean, electro, mean electrical axis pointing maybe 5 degrees, and Sally has one going 85 degrees, they're still normal. Anything between 0 and 90 degrees is a normal mean electrical axis. And why do we care about the mean electrical axis? Well, it's used to detect left ventricular hypertrophy, right ventricular hypertrophy. We'll demonstrate that in a minute. Myocardial infarction, bundle branch block. Some of these we'll talk about later. We're definitely going to talk about left ventricular hypertrophy. We've been talking about it in lab as well, and right ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, brain teaser. So if the mean electrical axis, given the mean electrical axis, the average of flow of electricity through the heart, through the right ventricle, isolated right ventricle, actually is traveling to the west. So why is it then that the mean electrical axis, the mean ventricular electrical axis, which is the average current flow of both the right and the left ventricles combined, why does it travel to the southeast? Anybody know? The left ventricle is huge. There's way more miles of wire in the left ventricle compared to the right ventricle. So it's a massive beast. Uh, left ventricle is much more massive and therefore contains more mileage of circuit. So it just overpowers the right ventricle. Now this is important territory now, uh, understanding the shape of the waveform of the mean electrical axis. So let me just go through here and we can read through that. Well, I'll keep, I'll try to stay on point, probably better. So a positive waveform, how do you get a positive waveform? That means that the current, the mean electrical, mean electrical axis, I'm just going to say the current sometimes the wave sometimes it all means the average flow of current through the heart. If the current is heading right at the electrode, so like example, let's pick on limb lead 2. If the current is heading right toward an electrode, it will be a completely positive or upright right waveform. Okay, simple as that. Um, so for example, this current is heading right at the camera lens. Uh, if we drew the angle of orientation of limb lead 2, we know it goes straight up like that. Right? So this current is heading. So how would this current, how would this camera draw the current? Right? So here's the isoelectric line. The QRS complex would look exactly like this. That's the QRS complex, and that's what they can look like sometimes. That means the wave is coming straight at it. Okay, got it? If, how would, let's put limb lead, uh, let's, let's put a lead over here. This isn't perfect AVR, but let's put a lead here with an angle of orientation going the opposite way. How would this camera draw the same waveform? Let's draw it down here it would be upside down, right? Because when the current goes away from a camera, it draws the current upside down. When it goes right at the camera, it draws it right side up. Okay. Everything I just said. What about if it's going, this is a very important concept right here. Um, what if it's going perpendicular to the camera? Let's go back here. So what if we have a current that's flowing like this? How 
how would the camera draw its, draw the wave? Well, let's draw the isoelectric line. Well, it's not heading right at it, so it won't be straight up. It's not heading right away from it, it won't be straight down. It'll be a mix of that current. So that's a biphasic current. So the first part of the current will be exactly the same as the second part of the current. That's trying to make that exactly the same. That's called a biphasic wave. And that's the key to look for these biphasic waves. This was what the QRS complex would look like. It'd look like a biphasic wave. Only I'm drawing it, it, it would be more narrow. I'm drawing it just so you can see. Okay, so those are three very important concepts. Positive uh, means the current's heading right at the camera. Negative means the current's heading away from the camera. Biphasic means it's heading perfectly perpendicular to the camera. So you got to understand those three things. Right, and there's a biphasic wave right there. Those of you who've had physics know that. And then here's everything I just said. The only thing I don't like about this picture, I keep meaning to change this. Um, these need to be perfectly, these electrodes need to be placed like this. They're kind of, the artists took a little liberty there. They have to be looking directly this way. So if a current is heading toward this, there's the waveform it draws. If the current is heading away from an electrode, it draws an inverted waveform. If the current is going perfectly perpendicular to this electrode, it draws this biphasic wave, which looks more like the QRS complex we're um, used to looking at. Now we get into the concept of almost biphasic, not perfectly biphasic. Th this are the ones we're going to run into here. Um, so there's some rules to this. You can still figure out where the mean electrical axis is um, by finding a semi-biphasic looking, I mean if you can find a perfectly biphasic, biphasic looking lead, that's great. The judge, you're, you know where the current is flowing. You're done figuring out. Because now we're going to start talking about how to figure out exactly where the flow of current is through the heart. Uh, so if you find one perfectly bi biphasic, uh, the job's done. But if you can find one that's semi-biphasic, your job is almost done. You just have to know a few rules. We have to make a few adjustments. So almost biphasic rules. If an approaching wave creates a positive waveform that is bigger than the negative waveform, then that tells us the current is heading slightly more toward the lead than away from the lead. It's still almost perpendicular, but if the current is heading toward the lead more, the left part of the waveform will be greater magnitude, is another way to say that, than the right part of the waveform. If the approaching current of a positive waveform is smaller than the negative waveform, then we know the current, it's heading semi-perpendicular, but it's more heading away uh, from perpendicular. So we can fine-tune the direction of the current based on that. We're going to do some examples, so this will <coughs> solidify that. So, um, so let's take a look at this diagram. So the first thing we need to do here, here's an electrode, a camera. We should draw its, its angle of orientation. So its angle of orientation is always straight out of the lead. So that's its angle of orientation. Okay, and now we have a current coming across its field of view. Okay, the first question is, is this current perpendicular? No, I could draw it perpendicular. Then it would be easy. Then we know exactly where the current would flow. Um, but that's too easy. So it's semi-perpendicular, but notice that it's coming slightly more toward the toward the electrode than away from the electrode. So how does this how does the electrode draw this current? Well, if it's coming by the rules we just talked about, if it's heading more toward the electrode than away from the electrode, the first part of the waveform will be bigger than the second part of the waveform. See how that works? It's still biphasic. 
but it's not perfectly symmetrically biphasic. Therefore, we know the current isn't exactly perpendicular. Okay, and then we can we can erase that scenario and look at this waveform and try to figure out what this current is seeing or what this electrode is seeing. So by looking at this waveform, what is this what is this electrode seeing? Well, it's the current is almost running perpendicular to the waveform. But it, we know it's not perfectly perpendicular because this first part of the waveform is bigger than the second part. We know that the current is heading slightly more at the at the um, at the electrode compared to away from the electrode. See how that works? Let's do the opposite. Now let's look here. So this is a waveform that we see on EKG. It's just stretched out to make it easier for you. So now the first part, and I'm giving you that the direction of current is this way because we at, we have to figure that out too. Uh, but for right now, I'm giving you that the current is flowing this direction. So the first part of the waveform, well, first thing, back up, it's it's biphasic. It's not perfectly biphasic. It's not perfectly. But because it's biphasic, we know that the current is heading somewhat perpendicular to the limb lead. And then we just need to fine-tune it because this is smaller uh, than this. It's heading actually away from perpendicular. Okay, so perfectly perpendicular would be just like that. So it's not perfectly perpendicular, uh, the current, because that's smaller, the current is actually heading a little bit away from perpendicular. And we can use this rule to figure out the mean electrical axis of the heart. All right, just a side note, repolarization, you can probably take this in, but remember the T wave is actually... Uh, it's, it's a wave of repolarization. And waves of repolarization run backwards, but they're also upside down. Uh, so I never asked this question, but just FYI, T wave is a wave of repolarization. The reason it's upright is because the cameras draw waves of repolarization upside down to this rule that I just described. All right, let's, let's so kind of forget that slide. Um, Let's figure out some mean electrical axes now. This is a th these are test questions just like this. Can you predict which way the mean electrical axis is traveling based on the QRS complex given limb lead 1 is positive? See this is why you have to memorize that angle of orientation wheel. So I can draw that. You should be able to you should be able to draw that, right? We'll let you have scrap paper on this test, right? So we know zero is here. That's limb lead one. We know limb lead two is right here at 60 degrees. We know AVF is at 90 degrees. Oops, 90 degrees. Negative 30 degrees is AVL. All right, and that's all we really need for this. All right, we can put a dot in the middle if we want. So, which way is the current flowing here? Um, well, let's look at the current. So, in a court, you know, I guess I shouldn't have drawn this yet because we're not <laughs> using this. Uh, but because this lead is kind of a random lead here, um, so the point is this is this is too advanced of a question. Getting ahead of myself. This is a simple question. This is the lead, so its angle of orientation would be looking down like this. So by looking at this red waveform, this is what the this is what the lead drew after the wave passed by it. So by looking at this waveform. What is the waveform? Is it waveform A, B, or C? So let's look. Is the first question you would ask, is this perfectly perpendicular? No. Let, so it can't be it can't be wave B. If it was wave B, this thing would be perfectly perpendicular. Or perfectly biphasic, sorry. Be perfectly biphasic. But it's not perfectly biphasic, is it? So it can't be 
it can't be wave B because that's not the waveform it would draw if that was wave B. Is it wave C? Okay, is it or current C? So is that the way the current's flowing through the ventricles? Well, no, because by definition, this current is headed more away from the limb lead than towards it. So if this were the case, it would be it would have a smaller first part and a bigger second part. So that can't be either. So it's got to be this A wave here. So this is the mean electrical axis for this diagram. See how that works? All right. So again, remember some fun facts. The the mean electrical axis normally travels between 0 and 90 degrees. Um, and pathological conditions like left ventricular hypertrophy and right ventricular hypertrophy, secondary to hypertension and pulmonary hypertension respectively, um, that can push the axis past the normal. It can push it into the negative territory. Uh, that's called a, uh, a left axis deviation. It can push it past the 90 degrees to maybe 130 degrees. And that's called a right axis deviation. So here's some rules. Um, so now, some of the questions will be easy because all I'll ask, I'll give you an EKG tracing, and I'll say, is this, does this patient have a normal axis? Or I might say mean uh, uh, mean. Uh, ventricular mean electrical axis. I might just say axis though. And so here's the rules for telling whether or not the axis of the heart is normal. So limb lead 1 will be mostly positive. Limb lead 2 will be mostly positive for that matter. Limb lead AVF, that's the one looking up, that's mostly positive. Limb lead AVR, mostly negative. Here's the key to look at. AVL, which is negative 30 degrees, um, that has to be at least a little biphasic. If your, if your QRS complex meets these rules, then you have a normal axis. You don't know exactly where the axis is going, but you know it's normal. All right, let's try it. Is this a normal axis? Here's a patient's EKG tracing. Um, and so we want to see if it's a normal axis. So we're going to use the limb leads and follow the rules. So let's look at limb lead 1. Limb lead 1 is mostly positive. If it's mostly positive, then we're headed for, yes, it's a normal axis, but we're not done. Um, limb lead 3, limb lead 2, too, has to be positive. Limb lead 3 has to be mostly positive, and here's the... QRS complex, and it is mostly positive, so we're on our way to normal heart. What's the next rule? AV, AVL has to be biphasic a little bit, and it is. It's got a little up limb above the isoelectric line, and it's got one down below the isoelectric line, so it is a little bit biphasic. Okay, and then AVR has to be mostly negative its waveform is mostly negative. So yes, this is a normal axis. But the question is where is what what is the mean electrical axis in accord with the AOO wheel? What does it you know what's its travel in degrees? Is it zero degrees? Is it thirty degrees? Is it sixty degrees? Where is it? That that will be the next part of the question. So there's everything I said, there's the rules, and yes, that was normal. So you can read through that again, figure, and this is hard. This is, this is probably the hardest part of CVPP right here. Right and left ax axis deviation, we said this already. So a left axis deviation means your mean electrical axis is, is more to the left or more counterclockwise than zero. It's maybe it's 30, it's 40 degrees. Okay, that means that's a left that's left axis deviation. Almost always the indication is left ventricular hypertrophy. 
if the mean electrical axis is too far clockwise in accord with the AOO wheel, if it's too far clockwise, let's say it's 110, 120, 130, 140, that's too far. That's shifted right. That axis has deviated to the right. And the condition that always causes that is right ventricular hypertrophy, which we've talked about from conditions like COPD, anything that causes pulmonary hypertension, um, anything that causes a beaver dam, left heart failure, lung failure, anything like that. Okay? So finding the mean electrical axis more precisely. So I taught you how to say is it is it okay or is it not okay? But now let's I want I want degrees. I want to know exactly where it's traveling. So I can't put any more stars on this, but this is super important. These are the rules. How do you find the mean electrical axis? So step one, find the limb lead, not the chest lead, find the limb lead that is most biphasic, and that's the one we're going to analyze. Okay, so the one that is most biphasic. What does that mean? Uh, well, it's it's the QRS complex that looks the most biphasic. It has an up part and a down part. Once you find that, then you have to determine the direction of flow. So you draw, you're going to draw perpendicular. You're going to draw the angle of um, of orientation, the straight line coming out of the camera. Then you're going to draw a line perpendicular to that. And then you're going to figure out which way is the current flowing. And we're going to go over this more. I'm just kind of whetting your appetite for this. And then once we find the direction of flow, we can fine tune the actual current uh, by by assessing whether the the biphasic wave is greater magnitude on the left part of the biphasic wave or is it greater magnitude on the down limb side of it the second part of the biphasic wave so let's go through this again all right best way to learn is by example so did my darn laser pointer disappear again i hope this shows up uh, 52 year old with dyspnea comes in chest pain you run an EKG this is what you find so the question is is this a normal mean electrical axis does this patient have a right axis deviation or left axis deviation or is his access normal is the current flow of current through the ventricles normal um, so and then I want to know what exactly is in degrees what is the mean electrical axis all right, remember normal anywhere from 0 to 90. Um, so we can do part 1 right here by, by reciting those rules. So is the mean electrical axis normal? Uh, well, the rules were limb 1, or limb lead 1 has to be mostly positive, and that's, that's way positive, right? Yeah, it's almost completely positive. Uh, limb lead 3 has to be mostly positive, and it is mostly positive. There's a little tiny blip down here, a little Q wave. That doesn't count for being a biphasic wave. And then we said AVR has to be mostly negative, and that's certainly mostly negative. Current's flowing away from it. And then the last rule is AVL has to be somewhat biphasic. And it is. It's got a pretty, it's got a, a pretty decent little... Uh, up limb here compared to this downward part of the wave. So it is biphasic. So yeah, this is a normal mean electrical axis. Okay, But now I want to know where exactly this current is flowing. So let me kind of catch up. This is to explain it to you again. Okay, Now where is the mean electrical axis heading? Now we have to go through those rules. Step one is to find the most biphasic wave. So where was the most biphasic wave? And you want to only use the limb leads for this. And you won't, you don't, here's a pro tip, don't use this one unless you absolutely have to. Don't use AVR because the rule, things are upside down. All right, so let's find the most biphasic wave we can find. Well, that's easy. It's AVL. That's the most biphasic. It's not perfectly biphasic, is it? Uh, the left part is smaller in magnitude than the right part. But nevertheless, that's the one we're going to use. So we're going to draw uh, 
AVL and see why you have to know the AAO wheel. You have to know where, how to draw the AAOL wheel. The angle of orientation wheel, you have to know how to draw it and where these leads show up on it. All right. Um, so yeah, so there's AVL we're going to use. And now step two, let's draw the AOO wheel. I think I had one too many O's in there. AOOO wheel, no, AO angle of orientation wheel. Um, so draw the wheel and we are using, who are we using again? I forget who we're using. AVL. So you have to draw in the AVL uh, camera. So we know that's at negative 30 degrees, but you can draw the camera if you want. Uh, and then we draw it out like this. Um, here's some other tips, because you're going to have trouble drawing this wheel. But just know that AVL is always 90 degrees away from limb lead 2. So 90 degrees here. AVF is always 90 degrees from limb lead 1. AVR is 90 degrees from limb lead 3. All right. So that's step one. Actually, this was just kind of a pro tip here. Here's step one. Draw the AOO wheel, which I just did. We draw, the, we draw its line of sight, which is coming straight out of the camera. Then we draw a perpendicular. That's the next step. We draw a perpendicular line uh, going right through the center of the AOO wheel. All right. And so we already kind of know that the current is going to be flowing something like this because limb lead 2 was it wasn't perfectly biphasic but it was biphasic so the current's going to be headed somewhere in here it's going to be we already know it's going to be headed maybe this way it's going to be headed maybe that way we have to figure it out um, but first we need to maybe it's headed this way what if it's going that way so we don't know yet so that's the next step after we've drawn this wheel and the perpendicular here which way is this current running? I gave it to you before. So remember I said if the current is heading right at a lead, it's going to be mostly positive. If the current is heading away from a lead, it's going to be mostly negative. So if limb lead 2 is mostly positive, which way is the current flowing? It must, it must be flowing straight at it. And that's exactly what has happened here. So by looking at limb lead 2, we can see the current is mostly positive. So now we know the direction of the current. So is this the answer? Is it 60 degrees? Is the, uh, is the mean electrical axis 6 degrees? No, because AVL is not perfectly biphasic, right? That's not perfectly biphasic. So now we need to make an adjustment. Huh, no pun intended. Make an adjustment to this perp perfectly perpendicular line. So now by the rules, is the first part of this waveform greater than the second part? The first part is smaller than the second part. So by definition, the current must be flowing away from AVL, from the perpendicular. So there's the camera would be right here. It's not perfectly perpendicular. It must be flowing away like that. So we know it's not flowing way over here because that would be an abnormal current. So it's got to be flowing just a little bit away, maybe a few degrees, probably 80 degrees. 70, 80 degrees would be the answer to this problem. See how that works? And there's everything I just said. So there's where it's about 75 degrees or so. And that, I mean, the answer choices will be, you know, it's not going to be 70, 80, 85. That's too, you know, this is not that precise a method. There are ways you can figure it out exactly, but that's close enough for us. Got it? Let's do another one. 62-year-old comes in the office, has blurred vision, headaches, blood pressure is high. He's not very good at taking his blood pressure medication. You run an EKG. I want to know the same thing. Is the mean electrical axis, is the axis normal and then what exactly is the mean electrical axis? Here's the ZKG tracing. Okay, so just by looking at it, is it normal? 
Well, the first part, fo follow the rules for, norm for a normal mean look of axis. Limb lead 1 has to be mostly positive. It is mostly positive. It's got a little biphasicness to it, but it's mostly positive. Limb lead 3 is mostly positive. Is limb lead 3 mostly positive? No way. Look at it. It's mostly negative. So this is not a normal access. So that's the end. You can stop right there. Okay. So now the next step. Let's progress here. Okay. I just explained everything. Okay. So now find the more precise question two. Find the more precise mean electrical access. All right. Um, so we need to draw the AOO wheel and then we need to find what's the most biphasic wave we can work with. And it's actually, well you tell me. Well yeah, some of you said AVR, but remember I said stay away from AVR because everything's upside down. You can use it if you want, uh, but it's better to use limb lead too. Because usually if these two will usually be about the same. Not always though, sometimes you're forced to use AVR. We'll show you one example of that. But that's pretty darn biphasic, right? So we kind of already know the answer to this. So this current is heading almost perpendicular to limb lead 2. Let's draw it out and see what it looks like. There's limb lead 2. We drew in our camera, drew in our line of sight, not line of drive, I almost said, line of sight, our angle of orientation. And then we draw the perpendicular to that. We know that limb lead 2 and limb lead AVL are 90 degrees apart, so we can draw in that waveform. All right, and that's pretty much the current flow right there because because Limley two is almost biphasic. We're gonna have to adjust it a little bit, but we almost already know the answer. The next step is critical: is which way is the current going? Is the current flowing this way, or is the current flowing this way? Well, if the current is flowing toward AVL, AVL will be mostly positive. And I, for your convenience, I threw in AVL right there. Sure enough, it's mostly positive. See how that works? Do you want to double check it? So what would, what would limb lead 3 be? If the current is really going like this, let's double check it. That's going to be flowing mostly away from limb lead 3. So we would expect limb lead 3 to be, the QRS complex would be mostly negative, right? Let's go check it. Is it mostly negative? Yeah, we already checked it. Right? So that matches. So we know the current. I mean, we're really kind of done. We know the current is way to the left of limb lead 1. So this is abnormal. This is left axis deviation. But let's get specific though. Let's let's get more specific about it. So the next question is we've got to analyze limb lead 2 uh, to see it's not perfectly biphasic. It's pretty close. But to me, it looks like this is a little bit a little bit smaller than the second part of the waveform. So the left part of the waveform is smaller than the right part of the waveform. Um, therefore, it has to be heading slightly away from perfectly perpendicular. Right? So that would put the current just like that. So it's probably running, oh, 40, 40 degrees, negative 40 degrees, negative 50 degrees, something like that. Negative 35, it's probably a little more than that. I say that every quarter and I forget to adjust that, but you get the point. Okay, see how that works? So left ventricular hypertrophy to review causes a left axis shift. Okay, it's got to be further left than zero degrees. Um, there is, I remember I said there was something else that can cause a left axis shift of the uh, QRS complex, and that's atrial flutter. Atrial flutter also can cause a left axis shift. What, what causes left ventricular hypertrophy? usually years of chronic hypertension, which hasn't been treated well. All right? Oh, let's do another one. So 56-year-old comes in, chronic cough, some dyspnea, heavy smoker, you do an EKG. Let's go through this one. Is the access normal? Well, let's go through our rules. Limb lead one, uh, right off the bat, 
were, no, this is not normal. The QRS complex should be mostly positive, and it's biphasic looking. So, no, that's not normal. So that part's done. Now, what is the mean electrical axis in the diagnosis? So to find the mean electrical axis, we need to find the most biphasic looking wave we can find. Lem, lem, uh, the QRS complex here is biphasic, but it's, kind, it's not, I mean, it's not perfectly biphasic by any means. But look at limb lead 2. Yeah, again, that's pretty biphasic, isn't it? The, this positive waveform here on the left is about the same magnitude as the negative waveform here. Uh, maybe, again, it's a little bit shorter. So that would already tell us, jumping ahead, that's going to tell us the axis, or the mean electrical axis is traveling slightly away from perpendicular. Right? That's step one. Who's the most biphasic? Limb lead two. Got it. Step two, draw in your perpendiculars. So just like we did before. Right? Uh, and that's pretty close, because it... The, it's so biphasic, it's going to look like this. Um, step three is which way is it going? Now, is maybe it's flowing down here. Maybe the current's flowing up here to, RV, to AVL. So just like before, if we look at AVL, that's going to tell us the story. If the current is heading at AVL, what's the QRS complex going to be look like? It's going to be mostly positive or mostly negative? It'll be mostly positive. So you tell me, is it mostly positive? No, it's negative. All right, it's mostly negative. So what does that tell you? Well, the current's flowing away from AVL. We can double check. Let's go look at limb lead 3. If the current is heading that way, limb lead 3 should be mostly positive. Is it mostly positive? Absolutely. Got it? All right. And then we can fine-tune it, as I said, everything we just said there. Uh, then we can fine-tune it. Um, it is slightly l the slightly less magnitude, the left part of the waveform. Therefore, it's heading more away from the limb lead. Uh, so that's the mean electrical axis. Um, and what is that? 30, 40, it's probably like around 130-ish or so. Negative, or positive 130, which is way to the right. Um, um, not 30, I meant, let's see, 30, 40, 50. Yeah, I probably should change that as well. 130 would be about there, 140. It's probably about 140. I'll try to change that. I say that every quarter, too. The point is, it's, it's way, way, way to the right toward, you know, 100 and, I'd still, I'd still say, well, it can't be 170. Oh, oh no, no, no. I'm. It's my bad. Um, this is. Let's see. That is about 70 degrees. Because this is 180 degrees right here. I was looking at that and thinking that's 150. Um, no, so I'm right. So it's around 100. My my other self is right. Uh, it's around 165, 170 degrees, right? Because this would be 100. This would be a negative 180 right here, or positive 180. Right, because that's a perpendicular. Then we get into negative territory. This is, you know, negative 170 would be about right here. See how that works? All right. So, yep, that indicates right ventricular hypertrophy. That's a right axis deviation, usually from COPD. Uh, anything that causes pulmonary hypertension, we've talked and talked about pulmonary hypertension. All right, and we've talked about Eisenmenger syndrome. It could be an AST or VSD that's went and it's uh, wrecked the lungs and caused Eisenmenger syndrome, which is pulmonary hypertension. Okay, EKG demonstrates right axis deviation. Yep, everything we said. All right, let's do one more, call it a day. 62-year-old comes in with dyspnea on exertion. You run an EKG. What's the axis? Is it normal? And then what's the exact axis? Well, let's follow the rules. So if it's normal, limb lead 1 will be mostly positive. The QRS complex is positive. Yes. Limb lead 3 will be, mo or limb lead uh, 3 
or AVF will be mostly positive. That's definitely not positive. Right? That's negative. Have I been saying limb lead 3? It should be a AVF. So, but anyway, it breaks the rule. So, no, this is not this is not normal. Now let's go find the axis. So we got to find who's the most bi biphasic. So who's the most biphasic looking one here? Well, unfortunately, it's AVR. There's nobody better than AVR. So we have to draw the AVR camera and draw the, the angle of orientation straight out from that and draw the perpendicular. And there's what we got. So, the next question is, is how, how, how biphasic is it? It's pretty darn close to perfectly symmetrical, isn't it? So we know the current is really going to be heading perpendicular to AVR. Um, I would say the, f the left part, again, is slightly less than the right part, or the, the, the yeah, the right part. Uh, so, you're used to seeing the waveform, let's see the waveform is inverted here. But the rules still apply. Uh, if the farthest left part of the waveform is of lesser magnitude than the right part, that means that it's going away from perpendicular. So draw the perpendicular. But now we need to know which way is the current flowing. Is it flowing up here or is it flowing down here? Well, it's heading right at limb lead 3, so limb lead 3 will tell the story, and I put it right there for you. Oh, that's mostly negative, right? So the current is heading away from this. Current's heading that way. If that's true, AVL should be mostly positive. Is that true? Yeah, AVL is mostly positive, so we know the direction of current flow. So already, I mean, we're really done, because it's so close to perpendicular. It's way left axis deviation, left ventricular hypertrophy. But if we want to be, let's get, let's fine tune it. Let's look at the waveform. Um, so the waveform is, let's see. Oops. Yeah, I should have left the other line to see. I wanted to make sure. It is heading slightly away from it. Um, so I should have left. Let's just do it on this one. Uh, because the waveform is slightly smaller, the left part magnitude of, of the waveform is slightly less than the right part, the current flows slightly away from the camera. So kind of down here um, to, I don't know, maybe negative 40 degrees or so. See how that works? This is hard, I know. I know, I hear you hard stuff. So go watch it again. Think about it. Come to the Q&A session. No one comes to the Q&A sessions and asks questions. Come ask your questions. See you guys later.